Hey there guys, thanks for clicking on. So today, like I said in the intro, is going to be uh, the back rib day. We smoke back ribs for a restaurant around here. We usually do kind of 70 to 80 at a time in the smokehouse. But uh, the smoke steps in my smokehouse can be the same as the smoke steps on your pellet grill. Uh, so what we're gonna do, is we got all the ribs opened up. We're gonna prepare them, uh, season them up pop them in the smokehouse, I'll give you the smoke steps, then we're gonna give them a wrap with butter, sugar, uh, honey, and finish them in a tin foil wrap. And that's where we kind of stop our rib cooking process and we send it to the restaurant, they reheat it and sauce it from there. But, uh, so that's kind of the steps. I'll give you all the steps as we go through. But step number one, I guess, is the selection of your back rib. So we pick some that, you know, got a little bit of meat cover on them. You want a little bit of meat on the top, but you don't want too much. I know you can get uh, spec ribs that are like have an inch of, or three quarters of an inch of meat on the top, and that's kind of just a little too much. You want something for people to bite into. So there's a nice meat cover. Right, there's, you know, a little bit, you can see the backbones there. There's a nice little bit of meat cover on the top. See the meat cover on the top. This is off where the loin would be. But uh, the next step here, guys, in preparation, which Brendan started already over there, is we're gonna pull the diaphragm off of these guys. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the chewy bit on ribs and then allows the spices and smoke to penetrate from both sides a little better. So we're gonna take our time using a meat hook and you get right underneath the diaphragm on one of these ribs, usually set against the table, but you go right on the bone there get the hook or a fork or whatever you got underneath and it lifts it up. You can see now that it's lifted. That diaphragm is lifted, lifts up and you pull it off of the back rib. And then this little bit here, it's body cavity fat and diaphragm so it's garbage. So we got this whole big pile of ribs to do here. We're gonna pull those diaphragms off each one of those there's Brendan, he's got started already. One more time, real quick. You take a, a knife or a fork or a spoon or something, find one of the, uh, the little ribs on the end. This meat hook's the best tool for this, I find. Just get underneath it. So I kinda got the wrong hand in front of the camera for you guys. Get that diaphragm lifted away. And you're done. Now we're gonna do that for everyone. Then the next step will be uh, prepping them for seasoning. All right, so we got all the diaphragms peeled off. So Cody and Brandon just space them out now and we'll get them prepped for our seasoning. All right, so we got it all spaced out. Now what we do next is we hit it with a thin layer of mustard. Starting with, you see we got the, uh, the rib side up because we're gonna flip it and then a little bit of spice is gonna fall off. So I always wanna end with the meat side up because that's where most of the meat is. You want most of the seasoning to hit the meat for the maximum amount of flavor on these guys. But Cody's just gonna put a little line of mustard on each one of those. You can see it's not a huge amount, just like a little shot. Then we're gonna spread that into each one of those ribs and that's gonna let those spices stick to the ribs real good. It's not really gonna affect the flavor. You know, you don't really hardly taste the mustard in the final product but it really helps those spices stick and the spices are that flavor. So that's what we're gonna do next. So we just go through each one, one by one, spread it out. You kind of want to have gloves and even cotton gloves underneath this because sometimes the edges of these ribs are kind of sharp and they will, I've had it before, they've cut your hand, but so we put gloves on now, but don't, it doesn't need much mustard. You just need a little, little layer there and that's gonna help your seasoning stick. And it's gonna just equal more flavor in your end product. I wonder if I am smart enough in the editing process to like figure out, you know how they do like fast forward things where they're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, another thing you can do uh, at this step is if they if they have like a lot of water in them or they were frozen pro previously, you could dab them dry before you hit them with the mustard, but uh, these ones are good, so. Now we just give them a nice even coat of seasoning all the way across. Make sure we get them all, and then uh, we'll flip them over to the other side, hit them with the mustard again. But uh, you can be pretty generous with the seasoning because 
that's where all our flavor is. Um, just enough so that it coats it. You know, if a little bit falls off, you're probably using the right amount. I'll give you guys the spice blend as soon as we're done seasoning them up here. So it's also going to be down in the description down below as always. Okay, pretty efficient process. We've done it a couple times. That bottom side's finished up. You can see like a little bit when Brendan flips it over, like a little bit of dust falls off. That's okay. See that? That's all right, no big deal. Now we're gonna do the money side here again. Same process. And like I mentioned, if you like wanted it to really stick, you could pat each one of these dry and then put your mustard down, but uh, they're pretty good. So I'll start hitting them with mustard and we'll do it all again. Also, does it matter what kind of mustard you use? Nope, I'm just using French's. You can use 99 cent dollar store mustard, whatever. It don't matter. Then once you got that mustard spread out again, nice even coat. Hit them with your barbecue rub, whatever barbecue rub you like. You can just use salt and pepper if you want. Give this one I give you in the description down below a try. Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment. All right, guys, there they are. That table looks pretty yummy now, eh? Look at those guys. And just a minute, like most of that excess powder and stuff would absorb into those ribs. We're going to start racking them here and uh, popping them in the smokehouse, which I have preheated over here to 225 Fahrenheit. So it's been going since we got started on this, but we'll pop them in there now. Say that again, Brendan. Well, why don't I read you the spices? Because I know some of the viewers prefer having it read than reading it. Uh, so I just do it in a ratio in grams. So you just multiply this by how, if you want more, uh, a larger batch, you multiply it. If you want a smaller batch, you multiply it. But uh, brown sugar, I use 80 grams. Paprika, 60 grams. Black pepper, six grams. Salt. 18 grams, garlic, 10 grams, onion powder, eight grams. And that's granulated garlic, not garlic salt, not garlic powder, I use granulated garlic. I find it gives it a little bit of texture. So it's brown sugar, 80 grams, paprika, 60 grams, black pepper, six grams, salt, 18 grams, granulated garlic, 10 grams, and onion powder, eight grams. So that's gonna make you a minimum batch and then you can just multiply it by two or three or four, depending on how big your jar is or how big a batch you're doing. But if you are just doing a couple, four racks of ribs, just use those amounts. You gotta have a gram scale to do it. I know it's kind of annoying. Some of you guys like it in teaspoons and tablespoons, but I do have a conversion table. I just gotta figure out how to get it to you guys. So, all right, last load going in. Perfect. This guy's one last look here because I don't open the door during the smoking process. So there they are all hanging out in the smoker. They're going to cook at 225 for five hours total. Um, the smoker's preheated. Keep that door closed in between loading it. And uh, 
I'm gonna hit them with some hickory chips right away here now. Get the smoke rolling on them. And uh, then on the fourth hour though, we're gonna pull them out and wrap them in tin foil. So we're gonna go get the tin foil prepped right now so that uh, when that time does come, we're, we're in and we're quick as fast as possible so the smokehouse doesn't lose too much heat. So we'll go get that tin foil ready now. So we're getting this ready now for the ribs. So we have a bunch of racks filled with sheets of tin foil. They got a little bit of honey, brown sugar, and butter for the win. That, hun or that butter's gonna melt. Uh, it's gonna melt in that brown sugar. That honey's gonna get warm, turned into a liquid. It's gonna kinda coat the ribs. It's gonna make them nice and juicy. And they're gonna cook in the tin foil for the last hour of the five hours here. And that's gonna kinda tender them up real good. So we. Prepped them all ahead of time. There's a rack ready to go. Another rack ready to go. We're gonna pop the ribs out on here. Another rack ready to go. So as soon as it hits that four hours in the smokehouse, we'll pop them out and start racking them. All right, so here they are gonna come out after four hours, guys. So I'll pop them onto that table and uh, we'll wrap them up quick. I'll show you the right technique for wrapping. I got some cotton gloves underneath here because they're hot. But there we go guys, after four hours. All right. Awesome, so we always put them with the uh, rib side down. So when we fold them, uh, the butter and honey and stuff end up going on kind of that cradled side of the back ribs. That way, when as they kind of, the butter heats up right away. So now the butter's in that cradle, the butter heats up right away runs down the cradle side, then down in onto the meat side. So I flip it over on itself once, fold it over on itself, and then flip these ends up to contain the butter. And then we do that for all of these ribs. All right, we got them all wrapped up, so the last load will go back in here. And, uh, uh, in there for the last hour. And I'll throw an extra 10 minutes on it just so the smokehouse can recover from us having the uh, door open. But they're gonna sit there at that 225 uh, for another hour just to kind of bring the final bit of temperature up in there. That butter's gonna melt, that honey's gonna turn into a liquid and it's gonna, those juices are just gonna steam it kind of in a way and make that back rib meat nice and tender. So we'll come check them an hour, check the temperature, open one up and do a little quality assurance. All right, that hour has gone by, wrapped up in the tin foil. So we're just gonna grab one, probe one. There we go, make sure that they are good and cooked. Okay, guys, it just falls off the bone. There you go. Got her up to 175 looks like where she's going to end so that's definitely good and cooked and they're nice and tender at that temperature so i'm just going to pull all these guys out put them on racks cool them down and then uh, i'll have one of these cut one up whoops losing that honey cut it up so you guys can see how good they look Okay guys, so it's the next day. These are our baby back smoked ribs that are ready for the restaurants we send them out to. So I'll just let you have a look. I'll bring it in so you guys can have a little look. Of course, they'd have been better yesterday coming right out of the smokehouse, but we just unwrapped that tin foil boat. All that juice should still be in there. There's that honey. Mmm, mmm. Mm. So that's how they look like and then uh, they go to the brewery and restaurants and stuff or whatever uh, Actually mostly hocktail breweries where we go. Maybe if we're lucky we'll go down there for uh, what they look like in the final product But that's our smoked baby back ribs guys They're real easy. They're real real delicious. This is probably one of my favorite things to eat on the planet Look at that guy. They just warm them back up in the tin foil take them out put their signature thing on them and they're good so if I don't get a chance to get down to the Hocktail Brewery, 
this is the video. Thanks for watching. But maybe if we're lucky, I'll get to take you guys down to Hocktail Brewery in this video and show you the final product. But if not, thanks for watching, guys. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, appreciate it, and we'll do more meat smoking sausage videos in the future. Take care.